income tax provisions versus the House? Um, we're still looking at tax reform. And from that perspective, we are looking seriously at, uh, at tax reform issues. And uh, I would like to see us being able to do both an across-the-board income tax cut or maybe some alterations in the income tax structure uh, along with the small business tax cut. And so we're trying to figure that out. Uh, our tax reform uh, work groups have been working diligently on that. Uh, and in that perspective, we've said all along we'd like to see ways to do both. Senator, the governor is proposing a kind of an alternative version to his severance tax. Uh, would, would, I guess about a quarter of it would go back to the uh, 33 Appalachian counties. Uh, the rest, I think, would go toward a tax cut, uh, income tax cut. Have you seen this? And if you have, what, what kind of thoughts do you have on it? I have not seen it. I've heard that something's being worked on, but I haven't seen the details. Uh, you've, but you have said that, that the drill, drilling tax is still part of the discussion, still, correct? Um, I honestly can't say whether it is or isn't. The House pretty much took the severance tax issue off the table. Mm -hmm. If they're steadfast against putting it back on the table, uh, I, I don't know that that's something we're going to fall on our sword on. Uh, but uh, from our perspective, we like to consider holistic, across-the-board tax reform. We'd like to put most things on the table. The only thing we've said was clearly off the table from our perspective was increasing the sales tax base uh, because we thought that the unintended consequences there were such that we could not get that done in a short period of time to eliminate all of the unintended consequences. In addition to the sales tax expansion, are there any other non-negotiables going into conference committee? There's very little non-negotiables with me ever. Um, I tend to believe that everything's on the table, you get better results. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, the House has said that uh, they didn't want to do the severance tax. And that was one. We said, fine, we're, we're not going to push that issue. Um, from our perspective, the other issues that are out there, um, we think Medicaid is probably not going to be inside the budget. Uh, we're still having that work group. Dave Burke is doing yeoman's work. We think we're making good progress on that issue, uh, along with some others um, that have been working on this issue for now some months. Uh, so, no, I don't have anything that's particularly off the table or on the table. What was the rationale for reducing the food bank money, and will that be something that well, you let's, will... Let's, let's stop that for a second, because that's just not a correct statement. We didn't reduce food bank money. Um, what we did was agreed to the increases that both the governor and the House put in. What we didn't do was increase another $2.5 million in additional increase. I mean, we'd all like to give $100 million to the food bank. But we were dealing with the reality that of the hundred and uh, I think it was $175 million that we had available in the Senate to, to allocate, we put $171 million of that back into K-12 education. And so we were having to make a policy decision if we wanted to do another $2.5 million for food bank, which was the request, do we take that out of education? And at this point, we didn't think that was necessarily a good ploy. And remember, the advocates forgot to tell you about the first, uh, I think the total number is about $15 million, $14.5 million. Uh, that's in uh, in the budget for food banks. And so when you talk about a $2.5 million request, make sure the story is correct. Uh, we approve $14.5 million. I think that's the right number for food banks today. Um, now, we'd like to do $20 million or $30 million, but the number is at some point you have to pick and choose where you're taking the money from. And in the Senate, we made our priorities being funding K-12 education. 